Hello everyone, this is Dr. Roger Paul, and tonight we're going to continue our study of paper 34, The Local Universe Mother Spirit, and we're in section six, The Spirit in Man, and that's on page 380.2, the original book. And let's say a little prayer and we'll get started. Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight that we might study your wonderful revelation. We pray that you'll watch over us tonight, open our hearts and minds, that we might look, remember a little bit of this to share it with others. And we thank you for the opportunity to do this, and we thank you for all those who listen. We say this in the name of your son, Michael, Jesus of Nazareth, amen. Amen. Okay. Roger, Tol I, amen. Yeah. Yeah. I remember in the past, uh, this, the spirit in man, uh -huh. In the mm -hmm. next section, I very much like. I enjoy yeah, it. yeah, it's a very, very nice section. It is. Uh, Letch and Jane, I told uh, Millie and Rodney already that I, we will not be here Thursday. We have to make a hospital run Thursday night. So, uh, okay, thank you. Okay, Roger. Yeah, we'll be back Tuesday. Hopefully, we'll thank be back you. Tuesday. We don't know anything yet. Good luck uh, on that visit. Yeah, yeah, it's my mother again. So we'll 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 see. You know, I have to take care of mom. Okay, the spirit in man. Diane, would you take the first one, please? With the advancing evolution of an inhabited planet and the further spiritualization of its inhabitants, additional spiritual influences may be received by such mature personalities. As morals progress in mind control and spirit perception, these multiple spirit ministries become more and more coordinate in function. They become increasingly blended with the over-ministry of the Paradise Trinity. Okay, uh, so it's interesting that as we advance evolution-wise, okay, um, what they're talking about here is right now we have three spirit influences, right? This uh, God the Father through the thought adjuster, we have the spirit of truth, uh, the sun, this influence of the sun, right? Both the uh, uh, infinite sun and our creator sun and the Holy Spirit, which is the influence of the uh, uh, infinite spirit and the local universe mother spirit. Those are our three spiritual influences. But as we get, we evolve over time, we have more influences that start to affect us. And one of these influences is the Trinity teacher sons, okay? So when the Trinity teacher sons come to the planet, that would be the actual direct increase over ministry of the Paradise Trinity itself, because these are Trinity teacher sons, okay? So I wanted to mention that. And those teachings that they will be giving to us will work in conjunction with the spiritual influences we already have, right? All right, so it's kind of preparing us, getting us ready, and then we'll have these new influences. Millie, would you take the next one, please? Yes. Although divinity may be plural in manifestation, in human experience, deity is singular, always one. Neither is spiritual ministry plural in human experience. Regardless of plurality of origin, all spirit influences are one in function. Indeed, they are one being the spirit of ministry of God, the sevenfold into the creatures of the grand universe. And as creatures grow in appreciation of and receptivity for this unifying minister of the spirit, it becomes in their experience, the ministry of God, the Supreme. Okay, so even though we have these three influences all the time, they always affect, uh, affect us as one ministry together, always. Okay, so you can think of, we really have one function of ministry. And, and even though we have the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit and God the Father, they all affect us as one ministry all the time. And that one ministry is the stepping down of God the sevenfold. Okay. And let's let's hit this little link and go out here to God the sevenfold. 
And this is uh, God the sevenfold, the creator sons and the local universe mother spirits, the ancients of days, the seven master spirits, the supreme being, the infinite spirit, the eternal son, and the universal father. Now, all of these ministries from all seven, from all seven of the God, the sevenfold, affect us as one single ministry. It's the stepping down of divinity to get down to us. You know, you'll notice, you know, the, the, the last three is God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Spirit, right? So it's stepping that down. And then to do that, you go down to the Supreme and then the Ancients of Days and the Seven Master Spirits and eventually the Mother Spirit and the Creator Son, all right? But it's interesting that the stepping down of the ministry to make us more uh, aware of this, this divinity or deity uh, it's part of the experience of the ministry of God, the Supreme itself, right? The middle one. Isn't that interesting? I think it's interesting that it says, as the creature grows in appreciation of and re receptivity for this mystifying ministry, you have to be yeah. receptive. Uh, that's right. And remember, our seventh master spirit is what? the vicegerent of God the Supreme right now, right? So if you think about it, the seventh master spirit is really our representation of God the Supreme, and, which is kind of nice because that's the closest one to us, <laughs> right? You know, is, is the seventh master spirit. All right, let's go on to the next one. Rodney, would you take the next one? Yes. From the heights of eternal glory, the divine spirit descends. By a long series of steps to meet you as you are, I mean, to meet you as you are and where you are. And then in the partnership of faith, lovingly to embrace the soul of mortal origin and to embark on the sure and certain retracement of those steps of condensation. Never stopping condensation. Yeah, it's consenting Never down to us, right? Right, okay. Never stopping until the evolutionary soul is safely exalted to the very heights of bliss from which the divine spirit originally sailed forth on the mission of mercy and ministry. Now, what, does, what is this divine spirit they keep mentioning here? The thought adjuster. The thought adjuster, that's right. So it's talking about how the thought adjuster descends down step by step to meet you where you are at that particular time and place. And it's all a part of your own faith that brings this thought adjuster down to for you to interact with. What a beautiful concept, right? And then it says lovingly to embrace the soul of the moral origin, right? And then once it embraces that immortal soul, then you start retracing the steps it came from for us to go back up to it. So our ascension plan is really the retracing of the steps of condescension. In other words, we're just going back right where it came from. This is God the Father. What an idea, you know? So it comes down to us and then we trace the steps back and go back to it, right? Where it originally came from, which is God the Father. What a, what a concept, it's just beautiful, right? Jane, would you take the next one, please? Very beautiful. It is. Yes. The divine spirit is the source of no, the, the one right above that. Okay, thank miss, you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Spiritual, Spiritual forces. Spiritual forces unerringly seek and attain their own original levels. Having gone out from the eternal, they are certain to return thereto, bringing with them all those children of time and space 
who have espoused the leading and teaching of the indwelling adjuster, those who have been truly born of the spirit, the faith sons of God. Isn't that beautiful? It, it always seeks to go back where it came from, right? And because we're born of spirit, we become faith sons of God. When we fuse with that adjuster, that adjuster knows the way back to God the Father. So all we have to do is accept it and, take, and go with the ride, right? <laughs> really, you know, we're hitchhiking back to God, really, when it comes right, right back to it, right? Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's faith, sons of God. All right. Let's see here. Let's, would you take the next one? Okay. Uh, the divine spirit is the source of continual ministry and encouragement to the children of man. Your power and achievement is according to his mercy through the renewing of the spirit, spiritual life like physical energy is consumed. Spiritual effort results in relative spiritual exhaustion. The whole ascendant experience is real as well as spiritual. Therefore, it is truly written. It is the spirit that quickens. The spirit gives life. Isn't it interesting that you consume the spiritual life? In other words, you, you get to the point where you're literally spiritually exhausted and it's the spirit that renews our life constantly and gives us new life all over again. That's why it says the spirit quickens, right? Recharges us, <clears throat> recharges our batteries, right? It's what faith is about, all right? Gary, would you take the next one? The dead theory of even the highest religious doctrines is powerless to transform human character or to control mortal behavior. What the world of today needs is the truth which your teacher of old declared, nor in word only, but also in power and the Holy Spirit, the seed of theoretical truth is dead. The highest moral concepts without effort, unless and effect. until. What's that? It's without effect. Without effect. Uh -huh. Right. Un unless and until the divine spirit breathes. breathes upon the forms of truth and quickens the formula of righteousness, formulas of righteousness. What in the world are they talking about this dead theory of highest religious doctrines? You know, I don't know, but you gave it to me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. What they're talking about is religious doctrines that's written down in texts on scribe by by on tablets on scribes and Bibles and everything you can think of that has no power until you breathe life into it. All the doctrines in the world aren't worth a grain of salt unless they're what living truth. And by breathing life into it, by making it living truth, by taking that truth and make it part of you, you bring it to what? You bring it to life, right? Because all of this would mean nothing if it was just dead truth, right? How are we supposed to know what to breathe life into and what not to? That's what the thought adjuster does. And that's what... The spirit of truth, especially, you know, when it says whenever you're, you're in doubt, what is the spirit of truth trying to do, supposed to do? It says in a small voice, this is the way, right? This is the way. That's what Jesus does. That spirit of truth is the literal, literal appearance of Jesus in our lives if you think about it, right? 
And that spirit of truth teaches us which ways to go so that that dead religious doctrine that's useless becomes alive, right? Without the truth, that means nothing, right? Jane, go ahead. And Roger, is it most of the time, because this is what I'm experiencing of late, is it most of the time not according to the way we used to think and do things? You got it on the head, Jane. Yeah, yeah. We have to reinterpret everything every day, right? That's the problem. We got all these written texts, all the Bibles, the Torahs, the, all this different stuff. We have to reinterpret what it was supposed to mean every day because of what? Revelation. All right. Revelation didn't stop. It never has. If someone tells you that the Bible is closed and that's all there is to truth, I'm going to tell them, tell them right to their face they're a liar. Don't quite say it. Well, <laughs> as my old instructor used to say, liar. <laughs> because truth never stops. It's living, okay? It keeps going. So what was true yesterday because of revelation, and we know this from experiencing this book, because of revelation, it not only becomes alive again, but it changes to a higher truth, right? Mm -hmm. you don't say the old truth is false you have to say it's been updated right it keeps transcending eh? it keeps transcending you have to reinterpret it daily in your lives right because we have new revelations daily don't we we have revelations in our mind. We have revelations from the thought adjuster. We have revelation from the Holy Spirit. We have revelations from the spirit of truth. Is this not true? Mm -hmm. Right? Every day? These are all new revelations daily. And look at the benefit we've had as a group. We had the revelation of the word becoming what? Book. Right? The Urantia book. Right? So we have to breathe new life in it again. We have to give it meaning and value all over again, right? And be willing to let it change too, you know? What you're, you're saying, Roger, excuse me. Huh? Go ahead. What you're saying, Roger, is truth is ever evolving and truth is an individual thing because as each, and us, each one of us is on a different level, so our individual truths are different. That's exactly so right, in, Gary. In the uh, seeking of God, we are actually seeking truth. You're seeking truth, and we're on each of us are on our own pathway, right? Right? Now, yeah. what does that mean? What is true for me may not be truth for you, right? It may be a different truth. It may be a truth in a different way, right? Just remember, Roger, what that means is we can all say that you're wrong. And for us, it's true. That's exactly right, Gary, all the time, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we, when we study this book, I, I say constantly over and over, this is my interpretation of it, right? Your interpretation can be totally different. That's okay right? I just try to lead you into the path of enlightenment and let you become enlightened on your own space and your own time and your own level, right? Right. That's what it's about. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Diane, you're up again. Okay. Those who have received and recognized the indwelling of God have been born of the spirit. You are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. It is not enough that this spirit be poured out upon you. The divine spirit must dominate and control every phase of human experience. Okay, do y'all catch that? You are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. So be careful what you do to the temple of God, right? 
and I could go on for hours on that, but I'm not going to. I don't want to get in trouble tonight. <laughs> what you're saying is no marijuana. No, no, I'm not either. <laughs> I'd think I'd think twice about scarring up my body with something that's ungodly, wouldn't you? Right? Some mm -hmm. things you can't change. That's just the way it is. All right, so you are the temple of God. The spirit of God dwells within you. Uh, and the spirit has been poured out upon you, but we have to let it dominate and control every single phase of human existence and experience. Okay, every phase. All right, so let God take over. Let him lead you. That's what he's supposed to do, right? Millie, would you take the next one? Yes. It is the presence of the divine spirit, the water of life that prevents the consuming thirst of mortal discontent and that indescribable hunger of the unspiritualized human mind. Spirit motivated beings never thirst for this spiritual water shall be in them as well as satisfaction springing up from into springing up into life everlasting such divinely watered souls <laughs> so divinely watered souls are all but independent of material environment as regards the joys of living and the satisfaction of earthly existence they are spiritually illuminated and refreshed, morally strengthened and endowed. So what is this telling us? It doesn't mean, it, it's telling us, it doesn't matter that you live in a mansion, does it? It doesn't matter if you live in a shack. It doesn't matter if you live under two twigs in a tree, does it? It's just material existence. And if you're watered by the divine spirit, all of these things of material environment are temporary, are they not? Our life begins there, not here, right? This is just the vestibule. So whatever happens to this world, it can go to hell in a handbasket, as they say. But that's okay because we have the water of life springing from within us, the spirit of God, right? That's the way we should look at it. All right. Let's see here. Rodney, would you take the next one? Yes. In every mortal, there exists a dual nature. The inheritance of animal tendencies in the high urge of spirit endowment. During the short life you live on Urantia, these two diverse and opposing urges can seldom be fully reconciled. They can hardly be harmonized and unified, but throughout your lifetime, the combined spirit ever ministers to assist you in subjecting the flesh more and more to the leading of the spirit. Even though you must live your material life through, even though you cannot escape the body and its necessities, nonetheless, in purpose and ideals, you are empowered increasingly to subject the animal nature to the mastery of the spirit. There truly exists within you a conspiracy of spiritual forces, a confederation of divine powers whose ex exclusive purpose is to affect your final deliverance from material bondage and finite handicap. How you like that? A spirit, a conspiracy, a spiritual forces, a confederation of divine powers. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. That's well. Pretty precise. Yeah. And they're all there to affect your deliverance from the material. Isn't that interesting? That right? is interesting, Roger. 
It is, you know, we're going to have animal urges, you know, we're going to have urges, you know, because it's built into us. We can't go around without eating. We get hungry, right? And, uh, you know, you have certain urges in life that are normal. It's not um, abnormal. You know, people used to, uh, I remember back when I was a Baptist, people used to say, how can you reconcile sex with religion, right? And I said, it's a normal thing. God put it there to reproduce. God put it there to, to, to populate the earth. It's nothing bad about it. It's how you use it. It becomes bad, right? You can't go around without eating. You have to eat, right? You can try to become a monk and sit around and not eat anything, but what's going to happen to you? You're going to dry up and die because the human body requires nourishment, right? Mm. These are all material things that are normal. They're not abnormal whatsoever, right? But the difference is this. The difference is to know that we have this spiritual forces or confederation of powers that's behind us all the way to help us overcome these things and bring us more and more into the spiritual life, right? It's just part of living, right? Well, I see the... Uh the mansion worlds as a sort of a continuation of the process of divorcing ourselves from our animal nature till we finally spiritualize and that's right need for animal needs yeah that's right and it, it comes notice ledge to it happens a little bit at a time on each and every yeah. mansion world you know mm -hmm. It's not like you jump onto the first mansion world and you're not hungry anymore and you're not doing this, you're not doing that. That's not the way it works. Exactly. You know, it has it to be evolved. A, yeah, evolved, yeah. smooth transition, right? And this is just our uh, first step, All right. right? All right. Uh, Jane, would you take the next one? Okay. Uh, the purpose, <clears throat> the purpose of all this ministration is that you may be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. And all this represents but the preliminary steps to the final attainment of the perfection of faith and service, that experience wherein you shall be filled with all the fullness of God, for all those who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. What a beautiful concept, be wow. filled with all the fullness of God, right? It's a gradual thing, right? It, it, and it can happen, right? And we can be strengthened by his inner strength constantly, right? All right. Uh, Lech, would you take the next one? Okay. Uh, the spirit never drives only leads. If you are a willing learner, if you want to attain spirit levels and reach divine heights, if you sincerely desire to reach the eternal goal, then the divine spirit will gently and lovingly lead you along the pathway of sonship and spiritual progress. Every step you take must be one of willingness, intelligent and cheerful cooperation. The domination of the spirit is never tainted with coercion nor compromised by compulsion. What an what a idea. The spirit never drives, only leads, right? So he's going to lead us into these things slowly and surely down the pathway of sonship and spiritual progress. So you'll be, you'll be led, but you have to Take it with willingness and intelligent, cheerful cooperation. That's hard for us, isn't it? We yeah. want to drive all the time, right? We don't want to be led anywhere. We just want to stay in control constantly. But we got to let go and be led. That's one of the parts of when we were talking earlier tonight about each one's truth is a little bit different, right? Because the spirit leads you down different pathways. My pathway is not your pathway and your pathway is not my pathway. So your enlightenment into spirituality is gonna to be totally different than my enlightenment, right? So your leading is gonna be different than mine. 
and you can't superimpose your leading onto someone else. They have to have their own, right? All right. All right. Okay. Uh, Gary, would you take the next one, please? Um, and when such a life of spirit guidance, guidance, guidance is freely and intelligently, well, I, we just read that, didn't we? No. no. Okay. Excuse me. And when such a life of spiritual guidance is freely and intelligently accepted, there gradually develops within the human mind a positive consciousness of divine contact and insurance of spiritual communication. Sooner or later, the spirit bears witness with your spirit, the adjuster, that you are a child of God. Already has your own thought adjuster told you of your kinship to God so that the record testifies that the spirit bears witness with your spirit, not to your spirit. You catch that? Bears witness with your spirit, not to. Why? Because it's a leading of the spirit in through your life. So they go, he goes with you, right? He doesn't lead to you. In other words, God's not back in the back part of your mind saying, you got to do it this way because if you don't, I'm going to zap you. You know, doesn't work that way, right? He kind of shows you quietly the way and you just accept it sooner or later. And as you learn to do that more and more than the adjuster, literally witnesses to you that yes you are a child of god you are a faith son of god right and the older you get the more sure you are of just that fact yeah jane but roger uh when he's referring with your spirit um what aspect of us is he referring to the soul the, the soul the, the soul yes the soul. It, it, it's really revealing with your revealing this to your your new immortal soul that you are developing in this life right thank it's you it's a witness to yourself right okay let's see uh who's up next here Get, did, who just read gary um, no yeah, you just read yeah, you, okay well diane you're back up you get the long one the consciousness of the spirit domination of a human life is presently attended by an increasing exhibition of the characteristics of the spirit and the life reactions of such a spirit-led mortal. For the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Such spirit-guided and divinely eliminated mortals while they yet tread the lowly path of toil and in human faithfulness perform the duties of their earthly assignment have already begun to discern the lights of eternal life as they glimmer on the faraway shores of another world already already have they begun to comprehend the reality of that inspiring and comforting truth the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And throughout every trial and in the presence of every hardship, spirit-born souls are sustained by the hope which transcends all fear because the love of God is shed abroad in all hearts by the presence of the divine spirit. You're muted, Roger. All right. You want to know who's the child of God? Just look at this list here, the fruits of the spirit. And if you know someone that shows these fruits, there's a pretty good chance that they're a child of God, isn't it? Right? Any way you look at it. That's why they list them all here, the, the, the fruits of the spirit, right? And people who have started living with the fruits of the spirit in their life, already start to understand 
what is coming in the next life those faraway shores of another world the, the, they can, can they already have an idea of the light they're coming into in another world and they realize that this light this life is not so, such importance at all is it it's what's coming that's what's important right and that's what it's interesting and throughout every trial in the presence of every hardship, the spirit-born souls are sustained by the hope that transcends all fears because the love of God is shed abroad in the hearts of this presence of the divine spirit. So they already see it, right? They see it far away, right? All right, number seven, <clears throat> the spirit and the flesh. I think we're going to make it through this paper tonight. Pretty good. I think we will. All right, number seven, the spirit and the flesh. Uh, Millie, would you take the first one, please? Yes. The flesh, the inherent nature derived from the animal origin races, does not naturally bear the fruits of the divine spirit. When the mortal nature has been upstepped by the addition of the nature of the maternal son of God, as material science science of God. material right additional of the nature of the material sons of God as the Arantia races were measure and were a measure, a measure. Yeah. were in a measure advanced by the bestowal of Adam then is the way better prepared for the spirit of truth to cooperate with the indwelling adjuster to bring forth the beautiful harvest of the character character fruits of the spirit. If you do not reject the spirit, even though eternity may be required to fulfill the commission, he will guide you into all truths. So if the mission of Adam would have been fully done, if it would have been fulfilled like it was supposed to have been, we would have been better prepared for the spirit of truth to teach us and lead us into to the more of the spirits of truth. But that didn't happen here. So partially, what you see around you going on in this world is because of the default of the atom, right? Because we got a little bit of it, but we didn't get enough, right? So we're going to have to just keep going and plug along with what we got, unfortunately. But it will eventually happen. And as it does, you will see people, individuals, with the character of the fruits of the Spirit, okay? Which is hard to see at daily in our lives right now, right? But it will be, it will happen. Just like it says in another place, Jesus says, uh, that this world will be run by what I teach you sooner or later, right? And he's right. Just going to take longer. All right. Uh, Rodney, would you take the next one, please? Yes. Evolutionary mortals inhabiting normal worlds of spiritual progress do not experience the acute conflicts between the spirit and the flesh which characterize the present day Urantia races. But even on the most ideal planets, pre-Adamic man must put forth positive efforts to ascend from the purely animalistic plane of existence up through successive levels of increasingly intellectual meanings and higher spiritual values. So if, if we had gotten a little bit more of what we were supposed to get, number one from the Caligaster 100 and number two from Adam, then we wouldn't have as much conflict between the spirit and the flesh in our life right now. But we had a double whammy, right? We didn't have a social world set up like it was supposed to from the Caligaster 100. And then we come along with Adam and Eve and we didn't get the influx of the Adamic stock like we were supposed to, right? So we have to put in more effort any way you look at it. 
but even on planets where it's ideal, they have to still put in effort too to ascend from these animalistic tendencies and planes of existence. So we can't say too much, uh, you know, like, oh, woe is me. We didn't get enough of this and that and the other, right? But it will happen up to successive levels over time, all right? So, but that's why we're in the mess we're in. All right, uh, Jane, would you take the next one? Okay. The mortals of a normal world do not experience constant warfare between their phys physical and spiritual natures. They are confronted with the necessity of climbing up from the animal levels of existence to the higher planes of spiritual living. But this ascent is more like undergoing an educational training when compared with the intense conflicts of Urantia mortals in this realm of the divergent material and spiritual natures. Only thing I can compare that to is when we get to the mansion worlds, we will be educated, right? We will be educated out of our animalistic tendencies right and on a normal world that's the way it feels but on a world like ours because we've had so much thing so many things happen to us it's it's harder for us because we're in constant material and spiritual battle all the time right and if you think about it y'all what do you see when you go out to the tv the internet and all these other places what you're looking at is a battle between spiritual, spirituality and materialistic world. Think about it, right? It really is. It's a constant battle. All right. Uh, Letch, would you take the next one? Okay. Uh, the Urantia peoples are suffering the consequences of a double deprivation of health in this task of progressive planetary spiritual attainment. The Kaligastya upheaval precipitated worldwide confusion and robbed all subsequent generations of the moral assistance which a well-ordered society would have provided. But even more disastrous was the Adamic default in that it deprived the races of that superior type of physical nature which would have been more consonant with spiritual aspirations. So now you see why the rebellion was so terrible, right? The Caligas upheaval was part of the rebellion. And then we didn't have the, and because of the endemic default, we didn't have the physical natures we should have had to be a more of a spiritual type of being, right? So we've kind of had a double whammy, but it'll all work out, believe it or not. Hey, Roger, can I ask a question? Yeah. I don't remember. Did Kalagaska have something to do with the uh, default of Adam and Eve? Or was it just something? Yes, he, yes he did. He was, he was still on the planet. When uh, after Kalagaska rebellion, you know, the Kalagaska 100, uh, 60 of them rebelled and caused havoc all over the world. They were still running havoc all over the world up through the time of Adam and Eve. And so when Adam and Eve were here, Kalagasa was still here. And since Adam and Eve were material sons and daughters, they could see Kalagasa like the other beings couldn't see him, right? So he, he constantly tried to create problems with the plan that Adam and Eve were supposed to stay on. And if you read the papers on Adam and Eve, it mentions him at one point, you know, getting involved and in trying to get uh, Eve to default. And he's pretty successful at it. So, uh, but yeah, he was, he was involved in that too. He's been a thorn in the side of all the beings, the celestial beings on this planet for a long, long time up to the time of Christ anyway. That's why it's in, so important to understand that during Pentecost, that all the rebel midwares and all these demons and stuff that were causing all this havoc and problems were all taken away in chains, right? Taken to the father's prison world. So we don't have an excuse 
of all the Caligasta, the demons from the Caligasta 100 or the midwayers to, to blame anymore. Most of our problems is our own evil tendencies. So we have to take some credit ourselves for some of our evil tendencies at this point, right? And when we do that, we'll learn to overcome them, right? All right. Uh, Gary, I think you're up next. Uh, you, with uh, your rancher mortals are... Yeah, your ranch mortals are compelled. Yeah, your rancher mortals are compelled to undergo such marked struggling between the spirit and the flesh because their remote ancestors were not more fully atomized by the endemic bestowal. It was a divine plan that the mortal races of Urantia should have had physical natures more naturally spirit responsive. So it was already always in the plan that, that we would get eventually straightened out physically, mentally, socially, and everything, right? That was the plan. But with the Caligas upheaval and the Adam default, it messed up everything. So we're going to, we've been having to struggle along and be pulled up by our bootstraps because we didn't get this done, right? Like many planets. So, but we'll make it. We're going to make it just fine. All right. Diane, would you take the next one? Notwithstanding this double disaster to man's nature and his environment, present day mortals would experience less of this apparent war warfare between the flesh and the spirit if they would enter the spirit kingdom, wherein the faith sons of God enjoy comparative deliverance from the slave bondage of the flesh in the enlightened and liberating service of wholehearted devotion to doing the will of God and heaven. Jesus showed mankind the new way of mortal living, whereby human beings may very largely escape the dire consequences of the Caligastic rebellion and most effectively compensate for the deprivations resulting from the Adamic default. The spirit of the life of Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of animal living and the temptations of evil and sin. This is the victory that overcomes the flesh, even your faith. So Jesus showed us the way through faith, being faith sons of God, to overcome these problems, okay? And through faith, you can literally overcome the physical things in your life that draws you in towards uh, the evil. You really can. All right. And that's why they say the, the spirit of life has Christ made us free from the law of animal living and the temptations of evil and sin. How did he do that? Through the spirit of truth. OK, that's what that influence is for, to help us overcome these things. All right. Uh, Millie, would you take the next one, please? Yes. Those God-knowing men and women who have been born of the Spirit experience no more conflict with their mortal natures than do the inhabitants of the most normal of worlds, planets, which have never been tainted with sin nor touched by rebellion. Faith sons work on intellectual levels and live on spiritual planes far above the conflicts produced by the unrestrained or unnatural physical desires. The normal urges of animal beings and the natural appetites and impulses of the physical nature are not in conflict with even the highest spiritual attainment, except in the minds of ignorant, mistaught, or unfortunately over-conscientious persons. Okay, so you wanna be free from the flesh? How do you do that? Become a faith son of God, right? It's as simple as it could be, right? Through faith, you can overcome all these things and live on this planet just as if you were on a normal world. You really can. 
right? But you have to overcome it. Now, the other thing in this paragraph that is so, so important is where it says here, uh, the normal urges of animal beings and natural and the natural appetites. You catch that? Mm -hmm. Impulses of the physical nature are not in conflict with even the highest spiritual attainment. That means you can live a life on this planet with all your desires, doing everything just like you'd like to do as a spiritual being, just fine. Except it says right here, except in the minds of ignorant, mistaught, or unfortunately over conscientious persons. What are they talking about? People that tell you you can't do this and you can't do that because they're trying to put their moral values on top of yours. Right? Do y'all understand what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. Because there is nothing that we experience in life that you cannot ca call normal if you're a faith son of God. That's, that's your key to living a life, all right? And I love this last paragraph, right? Rodney, would you take that last paragraph, please? Yes. Having started out on the way of life everlasting, having accepted the assignment and received your orders to advance, do not fear the dangers of human forgetfulness immortal inconstancy. Do not be troubled with doubts of failure or by perplexing confusion. Do not falter and question your status and standing. For in every dark hour, at every crossroads, in the forward struggle, the spirit of truth will always speak saying, this is the way. This was, paper was presented by a mighty messenger temporarily assigned to the service on your rancho. So the spirit of truth, which is what? The spirit of Jesus, right? The spirit, the voice of Jesus will always be there and speak to you saying, this is the way, right? Wow. So we have guidance. All we have to do is listen for it, right? So encouraging. What it is paper. like this is so amazing it yeah. is and it's all under it the local universe mother spirit right wow. <laughs> something that is never even mentioned in the old or new testament right mm -hmm. the local universe mother spirit right? you know you got to give something to the christian faith though they kind of spell this out they do in a different way Right. Yeah, it's more You're, understandable this way. There's this kind yeah. of fragmented, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a lot of things that's fragmented, and like the New Testament and stuff. I think that's why probably the Midwayers wanted so bad to retell the life of Christ. I really did. To, to give it some consistency all the way through. Because once you've read the life of Christ in your answer book, that's it that's it you got it you know there's there's nothing to compare to because there really is nothing to compare to right Roger. yeah oh, no i i let Ed, let's not finished uh, oh i finished what i said yeah oh okay, okay. yeah yeah um you. you know the three um uh, accept things that you explained so well, you know, except uh, in the minds of ignorant, mistaught, or unfortunately over conscientious yes. persons. Yes. Right. And, and you really uh, went into detail with, especially with the last one. Yeah. And what brought, uh, that brought to me while you were speaking is how Jesus uh, he went through the crucifixion yeah, yeah, and he allowed them, he allowed them to be, you know, um, 
he didn't judge he let them do whatever it was they were doing he didn't uh -huh. judge them did he Jane? didn't judge them he didn't it, judge anyway didn't judge the sanhedrin didn't judge the the pharisees the sadducees none of them now he did call them to task though didn't he 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 said this is your job why are you not doing your job basically you know but he realized that these men were ignorant, mistaught, and over. Correct. Over, yeah. yeah. That's exactly yeah. what came through. They, yeah. they, they had yeah. all three. They were so unfortunate in that sense. Yeah. That yeah. they were victims of all three. It reminds That's me of the, the three monkeys, you know? See no evil, hear no evil. <laughs> you know, I'm, really, if you think about it, it's the three monkeys. Um, yeah. You know, it's the you, same concept, right? Are you referring to the Sanhedrin? Yes, I am. Okay. The Sanhedrin, uh, you know, really you had the Pharisees, the Sadducees the, in the Sanhedrin. And, you know, each one of them had different tendencies that were worse than some of the others. But when it come right down to it, they all had the same problem, right? They're, they're all ate up with the, what? Me syndrome. Me, me, me syndrome, right? You know? Who do we know had the me, me, me syndrome beyond belief? Lucifer. Lucifer? Right. Mm -hmm. Who else? Caligastia, right? Me, 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 me. Right? I mean, the whole, whole premise of liberty as they were preaching it on this planet was the me, me, me syndrome, was it not? And if you think about it, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man is just exactly opposite of the me, me, me syndrome. Think about it, mm -hmm. right? Because it talks about loving God and serving man, right? Serving each other. If you love each other like you do yourself, then everything's gonna be all right, right? and you get rid of the me, me, me syndrome, right? That's a hard lesson to learn because it's a lot easier having the me, me, me syndrome than to love your fellow man and do what you know is best, right? That's a tough, tough one to learn, especially for children. When you're young, what do you do? You think about it. When you're young, you want to keep all your own toys. If you get a candy bar, you want it all for yourself. You don't want to share it, you know. Well, those tendencies just go on through teenage years and then eventually end up with with adults, right? And how's that show up in adults? Think about this. This is going to sound crazy, but in adults, it shows up in houses that are so ridiculously overspent on it's it's crazy you know everybody's got to have the best yard in the in the in the neighborhood they have to have the best cars the best trucks the best this the best that does any of those things mean anything spiritual in your future none of it you don't take none of it with you do you so why do you spend all your time spending seventy, eighty thousand dollars for a car that's not going to go to the mansion worlds with you? I got news for you. They don't transport them. There. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm preaching to wow. the church again. So. No, it's necessary. It's true. To it's remind truth. us, yeah. It does. All this stuff don't mean nothing, does it? when it comes right down mm -hmm. to it. it really well, I, next. I, I would say that uh, each and every one of us in this group and probably all other Urantia believers were, weren't coerced into learning it. I think the people who introduced, introduced us to it had an intuition that we needed this sort of spiritual growth in a different we, way other than the standard religion. So we are ready for it. We were there ready. No for coercion it, right? involved at all. Yeah, yeah. That's it, Let's. You know, it's it's funny how if you're ready for truth, the truth will appear. Is it not? Yeah. Isn't that strange? It just happens that way. Well, I want to remind everybody one more time: we won't be here Thursday. We'll be here again Tuesday. 
Uh, and on Thursday, we'll, or Tuesday, we'll take up the local universe sons of God. And now, Gary, this is the one on all the local universe sons you ask about a lot. So you'll enjoy this paper coming up. So. Okay. I just want to say one thing that you did not hear lately about the two Jewish men that figured out a way to take everything with them. How's that? They made a pact that the first one that dies, they will eat their estates to each other. And they made a pact that the uh, first one that dies would liquidate the dead man's uh, state and put the money into the coffin with him when he's buried. <laughs> and so when they were done, at the end of the day, you know, at the be before they closed the coffin, the surviving uh, partner or member walked quietly up to the uh, coffin and slipped a check in, into the coffin. <laughs> check in there, yeah. <laughs> so you cash that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think that's enough for tonight. Let's uh let's say a little prayer here. Let me stop the share here and we'll uh we'll close for the night. Whew. Lots of stuff in that paper, wasn't there? Good stuff. Good, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Uh, any volunteers for a prayer tonight? Anybody feel led to pray tonight? Me, me, me. I have no. a short one. I can say it. I found okay. it. Okay. I found it in my book. Okay. Go and ahead. And I, I kept it handy. All right. Okay. It's probably from the Urantia book. Our perfect and righteous heavenly Father. This day, guide and direct our journey, sanctify our steps, and coordinate our thoughts. Ever lead us in the ways of eternal progress. We ask this through Jesus Christ, Michael of Nebadon. Amen. 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 And Amen. thank you all that come see us from home and watch our videos. Uh, live. Let's see. Stop the Facebook here. Stop the comment.